Hi, my name is Greg Smith. I work for the International Road Assessment Program, or IRAP. I want to begin by saying congratulations on this 63rd anniversary of the Highway Patrol Group, which is led by its director, Police Chief Superintendent Arnel Escobar. And congratulations on this first road safety webinar. To everyone in the multi-purpose centre at Camp Crame, and everyone tuning in from regional offices, Mabuhai at Salamapo. This webinar comes at an incredibly important time. Very recently, the United Nations has adopted policy targets for road safety that reach out globally. They've also established the United Nations Road Safety Trust Fund. These two important global initiatives have enormous potential to help save thousands of lives, millions of lives in serious injuries every year. In this presentation, I want to talk about the importance of road design in road safety and the way in which IRAP looks at road safety. One of the most interesting things about road safety is that most people are not aware that their risk of death or serious injury depends an incredible amount on the design of the road. Take these two roads for example. One is a typical rural highway in Utah, USA. The other is a highway in Sweden. Superficially, they look fairly similar, but some subtle differences mean that your risk of death and serious injury on one road is around five times higher than on the other. Understanding those subtle differences and helping countries systematically reduce risk is what my organisation, IRAP, does. The International Road Assessment Program is a charity that was formed to tackle what is the largest killer of young people worldwide, road crashes. Our vision is a world free of high-risk roads. We do something very simple. We measure. We measure roads all over the world. We've developed a model which we use to give roads a star rating for safety. One star is bad. Three stars is okay. Five stars is really good. We eventually want every road in every country to be at least, at least, three stars. In the past 10 years or so, our very small team has helped more than 80 countries star rate about 700,000 kilometres of roads. An important reason that we've been able to reach so far is because we partner with organisations leading in road safety and development. We're supported by the FIA Foundation, we work closely with the World Bank and through them, Bloomberg Philanthropies. We work closely with the Asian Development Bank, Millennium Challenge Corporation and leading research institutes. Our process for rating roads is fairly simple. We begin by recording videos or images of the road and collecting GPS coordinates. Traditionally, this has been done with quite elaborate vehicles with multiple cameras and, and equipment. But increasingly, we're using off-the-shelf cameras and even Google Street View. We then set up teams to watch those videos and record road attributes that we know influence safety for every 100 metres along the road. We use that data with the IRAP model to create the star ratings. We can then make suggestions about how the road design can be changed. We can show the impact that it has on star ratings, and we can estimate how many lives could be saved. Throughout this process, we provide training to people on how to do these assessments themselves. After designs and roads are actually improved, we can then measure the impact and, we hope, celebrate success. So with this process, what have we found? Well, to put it simply, too often roads are being designed in a way that virtually guarantees catastrophic failure. Let me explain what I mean with a thought experiment. So, to begin the experiment, you might like to close your eyes and imagine what we're talking about. Imagine that you're an architect designing a fabulous new apartment building. Your client tells you that he or she needs to cut down on building costs a bit. So to save a little bit of money, you design the apartment balconies without railings. That sounds crazy, right? 
Obviously, this is a huge safety issue, right? No worries. To address the safety issue, you suggest to the client that signs be installed on all the balconies of the building. The signs will say, when you use this balcony, don't run, don't drink alcohol, don't be sleepy, don't be distracted by your phone, because if you do any of these things, you could fall off and die. But just in case people don't read the sign, you also suggest painting a white line on the edge of the balcony. I don't need to tell you what happens here. People will die. For sure, people will die. It might not happen immediately, but it will happen. We know that because there are two undeniable truths about human beings. We make mistakes, and we're fragile, we're easy to break. Architects and building engineers, they know this. But when it comes to road building, we still have a lot to learn. On this road, for example, vehicles are designed to hurtle past each other at high speed, with nothing more than a splash of paint separating them. There's no safety barrier separating the traffic, nothing the equivalent of a balcony handrail. And just like the apartment balcony without a railing, we know that on roads like this, it is not a question of whether people will die in a horrendous head-on crash. It's just a matter of when. Even the best driver in the world's safest car on a road today has a very small chance of survival if they are in a head-on crash on a highway like this. We often say that drivers need to take responsibility for their actions, that they need to be better educated and do more driver training. That is true to an extent, but we don't say the same thing about people using balconies. Instead, we simply design the balcony to minimise risk. There is a simple solution to roads like this, designs that virtually eradicate head-on crashes. Here, the safety barrier in the centre of the road is like a vaccine for head-on crashes. It acts in exactly the same way as a handrail on the balcony. It's recognition of the fact that people make mistakes and that we're fragile. Another key problem that we see all around the world is that pedestrians have nowhere to go. On a huge percentage of roads, pedestrians need to risk their lives by mixing with often fast-moving traffic. It's no wonder then that pedestrians often count for a huge percentage of road deaths. The solution? The humble sidewalk, one of the most potent vaccines against pedestrian deaths. What we need is for the humble sidewalk, free of obstructions like parked cars, to become a normal part of road design wherever there are pedestrians. One of the many countries that have made extensive use of IRAP is Mexico. In 2012, they assessed about 40,000 kilometres of their national highways. They did it again in 2015. In the intervening period, they made improvements to the network that led to a 17% increase in the length of road rated three stars or better. On the road between Cajetro and Irapuato, for example, the percentage rated three stars or better lifted from 10% to 89%. At the same time, they saw deaths decrease by an incredible 52%. By measuring risk in a systematic way and by applying safety treatments at scale, countries can make enormous inroads into what has seemed like an intractable problem. Like Mexico, the Philippines has assessed a large number of kilometres of national highways. In fact, about 6,000 kilometres of national highways have been star rated. As part of that work, the Department of Public Works and Highways has also undertaken a series of safe demonstration corridors. The road that links Agu and Baguio is just one of those. Previously, the road had many high-risk sections. These included sections of roads at schools, where hundreds of pedestrians, school children, had to walk on the road and share space with moving cars. 
The department did a series of designs that focused in on the high-risk sections of roads. And, very importantly, they implemented those designs. At many of the schools, there's now pedestrian crossings in place, sidewalks and pedestrian fences designed to guide the pedestrians to the safe crossing points. On sharp curves, where there's steep roadsides, and in many cases cliffs at the roadsides, new safety barriers have been installed. Paved shoulders have also been installed to help give slow moving traffic some extra space. The impact of these improvements on risk has been substantial. In many cases along the road, the risk of death and serious injury has been more than halved. That is, by making targeted infrastructure improvements to this road, the Department of Public Works and Highways has helped to reduce the risk of death and serious injury by more than 50% in many cases. Admittedly, the road is still in many cases just two star. But nonetheless, that two star is more than double the level of safety than it was before at the very high one star sections. Certainly there's more room for improvement, but big gains have already been made. As I said at the start, IRAP is a charity. We make our software free for anyone to use. If you have a computer, the internet, and an image of a road, then you can produce star ratings. Whoever you are, you can say something meaningful about how risk on a road can be reduced. I really encourage you to take a look at what we call the star rating demonstrator and see how star ratings and risk change as you change a road's design. You can use it to look at a road in a different way. Consider how you would design that road differently recognising that we all make mistakes and that we're very fragile. Our results are showing that each time you lift a road star rating by one star, you halve the cost of serious crashes, and in many cases the effort needed is not large. We would love to see every country doing what Mexico and the Philippines is doing right now, measuring and understanding risk on entire road networks and taking steps to improve designs. As they say, what you measure, you can manage. The benefits in terms of lives saved and serious injuries prevented are enormous. There is no doubt that by taking a coordinated approach to safety that brings together good road design, good vehicle design, education and police enforcement, we can create a world free of high risk roads. We can ensure that road crashes are no longer the leading cause of death for young people worldwide. Our results are showing that each time you lift a road star rating by one star, you halve the cost of serious crashes. And in many cases, the effort needed is not large. What we hope is that countries all around the world can do what Mexico and the Philippines is currently doing, and that is measure and understand risk across entire road networks, and importantly, take action. If we combine good road design with good vehicle design, education and police enforcement, we can make enormous impacts into road crashes. In fact, with that approach, we can virtually eradicate what is currently the leading cause of death for young people worldwide, road crashes. I wish you all the best in the rest of this webinar, but also in the work that you do, the very important work that you do in coming years. Mabuhay and salamat po.